Clark Gable, cinema idol of millions. Bronzed and tough, is now an officer in the United States Army Air Corps. World War II stirred the public like no previous conflict ever had or has since. Certain nations, notably the United States, employed celebrities to rally support for the war effort. Some actors went as far as leaving the glamour of Hollywood behind to engage in frontline combat. Find out a list of 10 stars of the silver screen who participated in the Second World War. I was just waiting for the war to be over. 10. Paul Newman. Did you know that Paul Blue Eyes Newman had color blindness? This condition led to his rejection for the coveted role of a pilot in the U.S. Air Force. After completing high school in 1943, Newman was enlisted for basic training instead of pursuing his dream of becoming a pilot. He trained as a rear seat radio man and gunner for torpedo bombers. In 1944, he underwent training as a replacement pilot for torpedo bomber squadrons at Barbers Point in Hawaii. Newman's path took a different turn when he was assigned to the USS Bunker Hill, which participated in the Battle of Okinawa in 1945. Due to his pilot's ear infection, Newman and his pilot were removed from the campaign, narrowly avoiding the extensive casualties that followed. Following his honorable discharge in 1946, Newman was decorated with the American Area Campaign Medal, the Good Conduct Medal, and the World War II Victory Medal. 9. Sir Alec Guinness The esteemed British actor paused his illustrious theater career in 1939 to enlist in the Royal Navy Volunteer Reserve. Surprisingly, the same man who would later advise Luke Skywalker to use the Force was once a formidable force himself. He played a significant role in the Allied invasion of Sicily in July 1943, known as Operation Husky, one of the war's largest amphibious campaigns. Guinness led a landing craft carrying over 200 British soldiers onto the Sicilian beaches. Additionally, he later transported arms and supplies to Yugoslavian partisans in the Eastern Mediterranean. Guinness later drew upon his wartime experiences to enrich his performances in Bridge on the River Kwai, 1957, and Tunes of Glory, 1960. 8. Clark Gable Following the devastating attack on Pearl Harbor by the Japanese on December 7, 1941, which plunged the United States into World War II, tragedy struck again for actor Clark Gable. Just over a month later, on January 16, 1942, his wife, actress Carol Lombard, tragically perished in a plane crash while returning home from a war bond rally in Indiana. Gable swiftly traveled to Las Vegas to claim the bodies of his wife and mother-in-law, Bess Peters. These consecutive tragedies deeply affected Gable, prompting him to seek solace in military service as a means of coping. Despite being 40 years old, Gable attempted to enlist in the army, only to be deemed too old for active duty. Undeterred, he reached out to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, requesting an assignment to contribute to the war effort. Roosevelt's response was a firm directive to stay where you are. Disregarding the president's instruction, Gable volunteered for the Army Air Forces and underwent a 13-week officer candidate school program. He received training as both a photographer and aerial gunner. Arriving at Biggs Army Air Base in Texas on January 27, 1943, Gable joined the 351st Bomb Unit bound for England. Tasked with leading a six-person motion picture unit, he spent the majority of the year stationed in England. During his service, Gable participated in five combat missions as an observer gunner, ultimately earning both the Air Medal and the Distinguished Flying Cross for his courageous contributions. By the end of 1943, Gable returned to the United States to oversee the editing of his film, Combat America. The subsequent year saw him promoted to the rank of Major, yet he was ultimately relieved of active duty on June 12, 1944, owing to his age. Rumors circulated that Adolf Hitler held a deep admiration for Clark Gable, purportedly offering a substantial reward for the capture of the debonair, mustachioed actor alive, with the intention of bringing him to Berlin. Number 7. Leslie Howard It's often overlooked that British actor Leslie Howard passed away just a few short years after the monumental success of the 1939 Oscar-winning film Gone with the Wind. Portraying the character of Ashley Wilkes, he became the object of affection for both Scarlett O'Hara, Vivian Lee, and Melanie Wilkes, Olivia de Havilland, propelling Howard's career to new heights. Tragically, Howard's life was cut short on June 1, 1943, at the age of 50, 
while aboard the ill-fated Boeck Flight 777. The civilian airliner was en route from Lisbon, Portugal to Bristol, England, when it was attacked and shot down by eight German Junkers Ju 88s, plunging into the Bay of Biscay and claiming the lives of all 17 individuals on board. To this day, numerous conspiracy theories circulate regarding the motives behind the targeting of this particular Douglas DC-3 plane. Some speculate that the Germans mistakenly believed British Prime Minister Winston Churchill was among the passengers though he was scheduled to return from Lisbon on a different flight that day. Others suggest that Howard and several other passengers were suspected British spies, adding layers of intrigue to the tragic event. Before his untimely demise, Leslie Howard had been actively involved in anti-German propaganda efforts and had produced films in support of the war endeavor. Additionally, there were murmurs suggesting his potential involvement in British intelligence. Howard had been delivering lectures in Spain and Portugal to promote his war film, The Lamp Still Burns. In the documentary Leslie Howard, The Man Who Gave a Damn, released in 2016 and delving into Howard's life and tragic death, it was revealed that Foreign Office files concerning BOAC Flight 777 remain classified. This secrecy has fueled speculation that Bletchley Park, the site where secret intelligence was gathered during the war, might have intercepted German plans to attack the aircraft. However, it's believed they refrained from disclosing this information to avoid alerting the Germans and revealing that the Enigma coding machines had been deciphered. The news of Howard's death was solemnly announced by novelist and broadcaster J.B. Priestley on the BBC, who expressed the sentiment shared by many, the war has claimed another casualty. The stage and screen have lost an unselfish artist and millions of us have lost a friend. 6. Tony Bennett The iconic crooner was drafted into the army in 1944 and assigned to the 63rd Infantry Division stationed in France and Germany. During his service, Tony Bennett experienced urban combat as part of his unit, famously dubbed the Blood and Fire Division, tasked with locating and apprehending Nazi stragglers in war-torn German towns. Bennett's dedication and abilities saw him rise in rank to corporal, However, a regrettable incident led to his demotion back to private status. Defending a black comrade in his unit from a bigot, Bennett resorted to strong language, resulting in disciplinary action. As punishment, he was briefly assigned to the grim duty of disinterring mass graves to prepare the bodies of fallen Allied soldiers for repatriation, a task fraught with emotional weight. Following this troubling encounter with racism and his involvement in liberating a Jewish concentration camp in Landsberg, Germany, Bennett embraced pacifism for the rest of his life. Nevertheless, it was during his military tenure that Bennett found his first significant opportunity to showcase his singing talent as a member of the military band. Towards the end of the war, he was reassigned to special services, concluding his service by touring various parts of Europe, entertaining troops and civilians alike. 5. Hugh Hefner Upon graduating from high school in 1944, Hugh Hefner enlisted in the war effort serving as an infantry clerk. During his basic training, he demonstrated exceptional marksmanship with an M1 rifle, earning a sharpshooting badge, and navigated the challenges of Killer College, mastering the art of evading live grenades. Stationed at Camp Adair in Salem, Oregon, and later at Camp Pickett in Virginia, Hefner found an outlet for his creative talents by contributing cartoons to Army newspapers, showcasing his journalistic flair. Though he served for two years in the U.S. Army as a non-combatant and did not experience direct combat, Hefner's time as a writer and cartoonist ignited his passion for journalism. Upon his discharge in 1946, he pursued this passion further, graduating in 1949 from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign with a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology, along with double minors in creative writing and art. For Mel Brooks, Mel Brooks, the comedic genius known for his wit and humor, began his military service straight out of high school in 1944 at just 17 years old, born Melvin Kaminsky. Due to his high intelligence test scores, Brooks was placed in the Army Specialized Training Program, ASTP, where he received training in military engineering, horsemanship, and saber wielding. He was deployed to Europe in June of that year with the Lennon Levinen 4th Engineer Combat Group and took part in the historic Battle of the Bulge though he later downplayed his proximity to the heaviest fighting. Arriving in Normandy, 
Brooks journeyed alongside Allied forces through France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Germany. His unit played a crucial role in constructing vital bridges, including the first bridge over the Roer River and others spanning the Rhine and Weser Rivers. Despite facing heavy shelling, sniper fire, and the constant threat of landmines, Brooks and his comrades persevered, clearing roads of debris and deactivating explosives, tasks for which Brooks took particular responsibility. At times, he even engaged in combat as infantry, always at the forefront of Allied advances. Following the war, Brooks was honorably discharged as a corporal. He then embarked on a career in comedy, achieving tremendous success with productions like his 1967 hit, The Producers, which famously featured the unforgettable song, Springtime for Hitler. Reflecting on his military experience, Brooks humorously quipped, I was a combat engineer. Isn't that ridiculous? The two things I hate most in the world are combat and engineering. 3. B. Arthur Despite B. Arthur's persistent, persistent denial of her involvement with the United States Marine Corps Women's Reserve during World War II, until her death in 2009, newly uncovered military records in 2010, as reported by the smoking gun in Time, confirmed her service as a typist and truck driver for a duration of 30 months. Under her birth name, Bernice Frankel, Arthur enlisted in 1943 at the age of 21. Excelling in her roles, she swiftly rose through the ranks from private to corporal to staff sergeant. Her service took her to Marine Corps and Navy air stations in both North Carolina and Virginia. During the enlistment process, Arthur underwent personality assessments which described her as argumentative and over-aggressive. A handwritten note from a Marine interviewer characterized her as officious but acknowledged her potential as a diligent worker if allowed independence. Despite her rapid advancement and commendable service, Arthur's military career came to an end in September 1945 with an honorable discharge. Contrary to rumors of her dismissal due to alleged aggressive behavior, her file contained a single misconduct report, citing her incapacitation for duty for five weeks in late 1944 due to contracting a venereal disease. This revelation shed light on Arthur's previously undisclosed military service, contradicting her lifelong denial of such involvement in interviews and public statements. Marcel Marceau, born Marcel Mangel to Jewish parents in 1920s France, the iconic mime artist made a significant change at the age of 16, adopting the surname Marceau after fleeing to the city of Limoges during the tumult of the Second World War. Tragically, his father, Charles, met his end in the Auschwitz concentration camp. During their time in Limoges, Marcel and his younger brother, Alain, courageously joined the French resistance. Their activities included forging documents and identity cards, crucial efforts aimed at thwarting German attempts to conscript French children into labor camps. Marcel's heroism extended further as he reportedly rescued over 70 Jewish children, masquerading as a Boy Scout leader and leading them to safety in Switzerland. Following France's liberation, Marceau enlisted in the Free French Forces under the leadership of Charles de Gaulle. Leveraging his proficiency in French, English, and German, he served as a liaison officer alongside U.S. General George Patton's army. Additionally, Marceau found solace and purpose in entertaining French troops with his mime performances, a precursor to his renowned character, Bip the Mime. Jimmy Stewart Jimmy Stewart, a Hollywood icon, made history as the first among the elite of Tinseltown to enlist in the war effort. Perhaps it was his family's deep military roots that spurred him into action. Both of his grandfathers had fought in the Civil War, and his father served in the First World War. In 1941, Stewart eagerly joined the U.S. Army Air Corps, though he faced an initial setback due to his slender frame. Standing at six foot three, he weighed a mere 138 pounds. Determined to qualify, Stewart embarked on a mission to bulk up, consuming copious amounts of spaghetti, steak, and milkshakes before his second physical exam, which he ultimately passed. Assigned to training in California initially, Stewart sought more than routine drills and desk duty. His journey led him to Goen Field in Boise, Idaho, and later to the 29th Bombardment Group, where he assumed the role of a flight instructor for B-17 Flying Fortresses. By March 1943, Stewart ascended to the position of Operations Officer of the 703rd Squadron 445th Bomb Group in Sioux City, Iowa, and within three weeks he was appointed the squadron's commander. On November 11th of the same year, 
Stuart led his squadron's 24 B-24H Liberators to England, integrating into the 2nd Air Division of the 8th Air Force. His inaugural mission involved bombing U-boat facilities in Kiel, Germany, followed by numerous others throughout 1944. Recognizing his leadership and valor, Stuart was promoted to major after completing over 20 combat missions. Throughout his military service, Stuart earned several distinguished honors, including the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal with Oak Cluster, the Croix de Guerre with Palm, and seven battle stars. Even after the war's end, Stuart's dedication to serving his country endured. He remained actively engaged in the Army Air Force's reserve while resuming his acting career. In a testament to his revered leadership, Stuart was promoted to Brigadier General on July 23, 1959, cementing his legacy as a beloved and respected figure among his troops. And that concludes our journey. Right below which actors we forgot to mention in the video. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.